This is Rich Kirshner with Sun Sounds of Arizona celebrating our 30th year as a reading service for blind and reading impaired people. And we're speaking with Sandra Magnus, who recently returned from the International Space Station. Sandy, congratulations on your mission and welcome home. Oh, thank you very much. I enjoyed the mission, but of course, it's always nice to be home. How do you feel after returning home from a few months in space? Do you know, I think one of the most interesting things was to experience gravity for the first time, you know, as an external force. You don't realize it, but when you stand up or raise your arm or walk around, you're doing a lot of work and using a lot of energy. And as we were re-entering the atmosphere, I was raising my arms and, and moving my legs. And, uh, you know, I hadn't had to work against gravity for four and a half months. And I was trying to get used to it. And I know the first time I stood up, I felt very heavy and it was really hard. And during my rehab, you know, my rehabilitation, they, they have me practicing some jumping exercises. And the first time I had to jump, you know, push myself off of the ground uh, against gravity, um, that was also very hard. So it's been very interesting, you know, learning how to work inside this very heavy force field where we live in every day. That was sort of surprising. What were your primary duties on the space station? Uh, our primary mission goal uh, was to activate all of the equipment that we need to support a six-person crew, which will be occurring in May. Uh, we put in a new toilet. We put in a couple of, of new bedrooms, if you will, small little closets where people can sleep. We activated the water reclamation system, which processes urine and condensate into potable water. Uh, we put in a new piece of exercise equipment, and there were several science experiments that we installed as well. So we were quite busy, and uh, luckily we were successful with a lot of help from the ground, and the six-person crew will, will start in May. Could you describe a typical day's activities on the station? Yeah, uh, we, got a, we were on Greenwich Mean Time. Uh, that sort of synchronized all of the ground controls together that are located all over the world. Uh, get up at 6 o'clock. I would do resistive exercise. We had a planning conference in the morning uh, where we organized our work for the day. The ground had sent us our schedule of tasks the night before, so we answered, asked or answered any questions about that. Uh, I usually, after that, either did some running or some biking because uh, we were required to do two hours of exercise a day in order to stay in shape to come back to Earth. Uh, after that, I'd clean up and start my work. Uh, which could be anything from, you know, working on installing the toilet to doing a science experiment to doing some audits so we understand what kind of equipment's on board. Uh, and then we'd have lunch. We got it usually an hour for lunch, and we ate together as a crew, which was very nice. And we'd do some more work in the afternoon until it was time to finish the day. We'd have another planning conference so that we wrapped up any open questions from the day and asked any questions about the next day. And then we'd have our time off in the evening, uh, during which time we ate, uh, took pictures of the earth, and just sort of uh, you know, did some personal things and uh, go to bed. We were scheduled to go to bed at 9.30 uh, our time, which I thought was a little early. Uh, so I usually, you know, we were all probably up a little bit later than that. And then we get up and do it all over again. Speaking with Sandra Magnus, who just returned from the International Space Station, with today's technology, how do you keep in touch with current events and can you communicate with your family while on orbit? You know, that's actually very important to be able to stay connected to your family and friends, and we had several ways to do that. We had email, of course, and about three times a day they would synchronize our email with the ground server so we would get new messages or be able to send out messages that we had written. We had a satellite phone that allowed us, when we had the right communication signal, to call our family, our friends. They could not call us, but we could call them, and so uh, you had that method, which was very nice. And then once a week, we were uh, allowed to have a video conference with our immediate family uh, on Sundays for some time, and that was also very nice. So at Christmas, for example, I was able to have uh, a two-hour video conference uh, and spend that time with my family during the time where they were opening, opening their presents, even though I wasn't there physically, I was there via the TV, and that was also very nice. Um, and then the ground uh, will, ship, will ship us up news segments. So when I, for example, was running on the treadmill, I was able to listen to the news. Uh, so I was sort of plugged in, you know, maybe three or four times a day to the news programs. And, and so we have a lot of ways to stay connected to the Earth while we're in the space. Well, Sandy, what foods did you miss most while you were away from home? You know, I missed um, Mexican food, ice cream, 
and sushi. <laughs> Those were my favorites. And green, you know, just crunchy vegetables. I missed crunchy vegetables, too. <laughs> <laughs> After a few months on the space station, you returned on the shuttle with fellow astronaut John Phillips. When I spoke with John during the Expedition 11 mission, he and Sergei Krikalev said that three months uh, they would still be on a learning curve, and at, at six months on board would be just about right. Your thoughts on a good mission duration? You know, we, we talked about that a little bit on board, and I think uh, we decided, you know, four is probably a good number, four-ish, four and a half-ish. But I think it's important that you, you kind of know ahead of time what your mission duration is, because that's what you're psychologically set for. You know, you know that, okay, I have six months, and so, you know, five months you know you're a month from going home, and, and you can sort of establish the right mind frame for that. And so that's really the right thing to do, is just to know what your mission duration is and, and you can prepare for it appropriately. What was the most magnificent sight you enjoyed while on board the space station? Uh, my favorite sight to look at over the planet is the Caribbean. And the reason is, in the Caribbean you have um, deep dark blues of the ocean. But when you get into the uh, shallower areas and there's underwater depth changes from sand or coral, I'm not entirely sure what, but the deep dark blues go to royal blues, midnight blues, royal blues, aquas, blue greens, green blues, green yellows, and there's patterns to these color changes and they're very dramatic and they're very widespread. And so there's this very nice blue uh, blue canvas, almost looking like modern art in, in different places, and uh, you know, sprinkled in with the islands uh, here and there, and it's absolutely gorgeous. So that was definitely my, my favorite place to look at as we flew over. Wow. Could you actually uh, get a depth perception? Was there a three-dimensional, like if you were passing over mountains or clouds, could you actually see a difference in altitude uh, on different uh, vistas? Yes, you could. And what was really interesting about the clouds was, was that the clouds were, were actually fascinating just to watch in and of themselves because they had different textures, they had different patterns, they did have, you know, when you have the big thunderstorms, if you can imagine a big thunderstorm, you've got these big, strong, high, billowy clouds, sometimes with that anvil uh, that they have on them, and they're all dark, and, and at night you can see the lightning going from cloud to cloud, but, but they can be very dramatic. And then near a sunset or a sunrise, you could see the sun glowing glancing off of the clouds and casting sh long, long shadows behind them on the clouds that were behind them. And you get the colors, you know, the rose and the orange and the pink and the yellow colors that you can actually see in sunsets on the ground. But on orbit, you're seeing these from uh, above. And the, 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 so you'd have the happy clouds. If you've, if you've seen clouds on a, a sunny day that are white and puffy and just big cotton balls in the sky, you can see those kinds of clouds and clouds with different kind of patterns. Uh, sometimes they were neat little puffy clouds in rows. And so there would be a, a structure to the clouds. And so clouds actually became very fascinating for me, and I took lots of pictures of clouds. Oh, that's amazing. Well, I've saved the last question for you. This is the most riveting one that I ask of all the guests on our show. What's your favorite food, and what do you want for Christmas? Oh, my goodness. What's my favorite food? Um, you know, I like food. <laughs> I have lots of favorite foods. Um, I don't know what my favorite food is. I think I like uh, I like sushi a lot. Uh, that's so it's probably up there. Uh, I like eggplant and uh, tomatoes. I eat a lot of tomatoes, so those are probably up there near the top of my list. And what do I want for Christmas? Oh my! <laughs> <laughs> you know what I want for Christmas? I would like to make sure that my whole family can get together uh, for Christmas because I really missed having that gathering last year. And so I'm going to work really hard to make sure we can all be in one place uh, this year. Well, Sandy, thank you very much for spending a few minutes with us. And all the best to you and Godspeed in your future endeavors. Well, thank you very much. And it was uh, very nice talking to you this morning. Thank you. Take care, Sandy.